City Lights Bar and Event Center is your official home for the Aberdeen Wings. Drop down for an ice cold beer or drink and choose from one of the many excellent food options on their menu. Available for both lunch and dinner. And when your Aberdeen Wings are on the road trying to earn their way back to the Robertson Cup Championship, come on down to City Lights and watch the away games as the audio and video are streamed live. City Lights Bar and Event Center, the official home for the Aberdeen Wings on South 2nd Street, just south of the overpass in Aberdeen. All right, second portion of Wings Weekly continues on as, well, second portion isn't continuing on. We're starting the second portion of Wings Weekly, and as usual, a player is joining me, and this time it is Nick Comfort, and he is affectionately known as Comfy. <laughs> yep, yep, that's me. <laughs> so, Celine, Michigan, uh, a, a fairly small town. I was just doing a little uh, looking into this. I'm like, that's about 9,000 people, kind of down on the thumb of Michigan. You're surrounded by, well, Lake Superior's there, like, you know, uh, Michigan. Michigan and then Lake Huron. You, you've got a lot of freshwater, those big lakes around. Do you do a lot of fishing and stuff? Or? Not a lot of fishing. Um, we take try to take trips out to Lake Michigan yeah. uh, once a year and then a lot of our uh, lake time is actually on the inland lakes, uh, okay. cl closer to our house. Um, we don't spend a lot of time on the big lakes. So kind of like here. Yeah. I mean, really, like we're, we've got lakes 12 miles here, the 12 miles mm -hmm. there, there's little smaller lakes and so on. So a little bit right. the same. Um, I, I, I ask everybody this stuff, but you know, well, we're going to get to your hockey start in just a second. But again, you're, you're a veteran guy. You were here last year. Uh, you know, you're, you're you're a guy that clearly know a little, uh, you know, that people look to for some advice or whatever else. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people know that you're kind of a little bit more of a quiet guy. You're not one of those guys that's going to be a rebel rouser or or so on. Um, what's it? How is the leadership part of again? Uh, Last couple of weeks, we've talked about not what people that don't necessarily have a letter on their sweater, but they're still leaders. And you're one of those guys. You're clearly one of those guys that people look to. What does that mean to you? I think it's just trying to rope guys in, some of the younger guys in, and and get uh, improve their habits, their practice habits, their um, overall just living habits. I think can help improve the younger guys. Okay. You know, a, it's a big step coming from high school or uh, AAA to, to juniors, and I think having the older guys kind of take take some of the younger ones under their wing can can help improve um, their game. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I don't think people are often understand that that there, it is a big step from high school or AAA to to this, this level of juniors. And in the years past, I've I remember I've talked to parents even that have said, well, why isn't he playing all the time or this time? Like, yeah, I know you think he was a stud in high school and he was, but now they're all studs. Now they're all like everybody. You have to earn that time. It's, it's so it is. There's it's a, a long process. It is. Yeah. There's a difference for sure. Where, how did you get started? Well, you know, I've met your mom and dad a few times. They're very nice people. And clearly they were uh, instrumental in getting you going with, um, uh, with, with your career in hockey and so on. Where, you know, but where did you, how did, walk us through that beginning yeah so I started you know with learn to skate uh, with with one of my cousins in um, the Ann Arbor area and you know from there just fell in love with the game and <clears throat> mm -hmm. think about that was probably you know three or four learn to skate and then eventually got into you know the Timbits and and uh, minor league hockey so yeah for those of us that don't know what is tin bits I, I do know what tin bits but it's uh, basically learn to play. I mean, you're four or five, sometimes six years old, and you're out there, you know, learn learn the game and having fun. That's but pretty it, much it, it. Isn't that a Hortons thing? Yeah. Okay. It's just a, a sponsorship. It used to be. I don't think they do it anymore. Okay. But I was, like, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I bet you people around here don't, I've never heard of Tidbits, <laughs> but I'm like, they're oh, little, like the they're donut? donut holes. Yeah. yeah. Like they're, they're the ones that sponsor yeah. it, right? Yeah. Or am I wrong? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they still do, but... Well, and it's it's funny, folks. Just you know, if you're watching, and you see a flyer at the ODI Center or something about the Aberdeen Cougars, learn to play, learn to you know, come skate, skate for free, dot to dot. Uh, that's exactly what what Comfy's just talking about. That's an opportunity for these two, three, four year olds to go out there, get a little coaching, get some some and uh, some time on the ice. Guy like him, he started that way. So come on out. Everybody then. does. Yep, yep. All right. So I was just talking with. Um, 
with Coach a little about uh, you know some of the things that are, have, have been going on over the last few weeks. And one of the things that has been a little bit, I seem it seems like to me that the defensemen are getting more offensive. Mm-hmm. You're in on the rush. You're going down the wall. You're in on the play. As a defenseman guy, you know what? What? How, what do you see? How do you see that? Because you know there are some guys that want us. You know that are are more like. I don't want to. How do I put that exactly? They, More defensive. They, yeah, they're home, like home-minded, you yeah. know. And there's others that want to go. So, where do you? How do you fit in there? I would say I'm more more defensive for sure, but there's a time and a place to jump in and situationally, you know, if you're if you're leading in a game, there's for for me, there's no reason to jump. Mm-hmm. But you know, we're down like on Saturday, we're down by one goal. You know, you start to get a little bit more offensive and and aggressive mm-hmm. on some of your some of your reads. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. But yeah, I mean that, that's a great example. I don't think again people when you see a defenseman go down the wall and you know and then guys cycle back up to kind of cover the blue line until you work your way back out i don't know that people recognize necessarily why that's happening but you guys obviously as you said you know there's times to be more mm-hmm. uh, aggressive and other times to to be a little bit more stay at home uh interesting because it has become a more i don't know a prevalent like more prevalent part of the game it seems like yes. over the in know. the last five to ten years like starting in the nhl like and trickling down um defensemen have been more more offensive and um it's proven that it helps win games so yeah well options basically i mean it gives more options very cool okay so how about um any other sports as you grew up we talked about your start in hockey (coughs) did you play baseball or anything like that uh when i was younger i did a little bit of everything um through middle school and early high school i played lacrosse Mm -hmm. um that was kind of my Lacrosse and hockey were my main two for a while. It's kind of big in Michigan, isn't it? It's pretty big. Yeah, there's Michigan, Wisconsin. I feel like that's a that's a big area yeah. for, for some. Other than out east, out east is definitely yeah. the biggest. But other than that, yeah, Michigan's pretty big for lacrosse. Yeah, and the Dakotas, we don't really, you know, here they've they've been, you know, the Cobras have started and they've tried to do some things like that, but it's just hasn't been quite as big as like you said, mm-hmm. out east, you know, Pennsylvania, New York, and so on. But okay, so you know, I always ask everybody this, but like. And I always say this, but it's different for each person. Your final meal, what's it going to be? What, what are you going to cook? What, or not, you don't have to cook it. Somebody else is going to cook it for you. What are you, what are you having? I think I would go salmon. Yeah? Yeah. Alaskan salmon. Alaskan salmon. What's going with it? Uh, salmon. That's a broccoli. great choice. Okay. okay. Broccoli and some kind of rice. Healthy, this guy. He's maybe some sweet potatoes too. Yeah. See, I'm thinking to myself like, if this is my last meal, give me the grease, give me the the gizzards and the fatty yeah, French maybe. fries, and he's over here eating salmon and rice. But that's why he looks like he does, and I look like I do. <laughs> um, all right. So, superhero skill. What's going to be? Can you fly? You can. You can. You can walk through walls. You're invisible. You're doing anything. What's your superhero skill going to be? I would say teleportation. Teleportation. Okay. Now that leads me to. So you can teleport anywhere. Where are you going? If you want to go on vacation, I would say everywhere. Well, okay, but like one spot, you have a destination. Is it Italy? Is it, you know, like a beach in Mexico? Like where where are you going? I would say Europe for sure. Um, it, probably Italy. Yeah. Italy or or Australia. Oh, Australia. Yeah. It's so dangerous though. They got weird snakes and spiders and stuff there, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that. I'm all about Italy though. Italy and Greece, uh, those two mm-hmm. places are would be tough. Um, okay, so now if you could have the ability to speak any language, now you're in Europe, you're in Italy, you're wherever. If you could speak any language in the world fluently or talk to animals and be able to communicate with animals, what's your choice? Which one are you going to do? One or the other? Yeah. Hmm. I'll say animals. Most people do. Good answer. Good answer. Okay. Now, uh, another one that I love to ask guys because it puts you on the spot. What 
who in your locker room and now again we're oh at city lights yeah <laughs> city lights a bar and event center so you don't get a chance to look around the locker room because years ago i remember guys just sitting there looking going oh who am i thinking of who am i thinking of <laughs> but of your teammates who do you trust with the briefcase full of your money they are not going to lose it. They're not going to spend it. They're not going to steal it. They're not any. They're, you, who do you trust? Zach Ryan. Zach Ryan. Hundred percent. I think that's like the third time he's. I think that might be the third time that people have said Reimer's the guy. Very trustworthy. Okay, now your sister, you know, or or maybe okay, maybe someday your daughter, you know, whatever. Who do you who do you trust to to date them? Hmm. I love this question. <laughs> they always panic. They always are like, God, none of them, none of them. <laughs> uh, Ando, Jackson Anderson. I could see that. I could see that too. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. I got to stick with my defenseman. <laughs> All right. You've got Austin coming up. Just talk to the coach a little bit about what they do, what they what they bring. Now, like Coach said, this isn't really about Austin at this point. You know, it's not about whoever you face. It's about you guys improving and getting continuity and, and building the you know the, your game and getting better at it from week to week. Now, from what I've heard from coaches and stuff, the last few weeks of practice have been great. You guys are, are you know are really starting to, to show some some strides and improvement and clearly winning on Friday night like that, big deal. Mm -hmm. It matters a lot. Now. How do you go to Riverside Arena and, and come away with some points? What do you have to do? I think focusing on us is very important. I mm -hmm. think, you know, sticking to our game plan and, you know, maybe getting some D in the rush and, and having that uh, scoring input from, from the D-men uh, will be huge. Um, you know, the forwards can can keep working hard and, and cycling the puck down low, and I think we can be uh, come out with four points. That's the goal. That's certainly the goal. All right, Saturday night, City Lights Barn Event Center, where we're at now. We had an opportunity for you guys to come down and have some burgers and stuff, and, and uh, we call it a wings after party. You guys get a chance to talk with fans and stuff like that. What it, now, again, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're a veteran guy, so I'm not ex you're not going to you're not going to go crawling away from me. I know that. Does it? Is that fun for you guys? Like, I mean, and you can be honest. I know obviously we're promoting things and we're promoting the, the relationship with fans and everything else, but is it sort of like, man, I just, I really just want to go home. Or is it like, I'm looking forward to this. I know after, after a loss. After a loss, not, not the best time, but you know, after a win, it's definitely nice to meet the fans and, and get to know them a little bit yeah. and hang out with the guys. I think most guys generally can't sleep immediately after a game anyway, so. It's better to, to hang out with them and yeah. some fans and get to know them. That makes a whole lot of sense because I know even I, like I can't shut my mind off. It's not like I can just go home and turn the switch off no. and go to sleep. Like it doesn't work that way. And uh, I know that it's always entertaining uh, to, to meet fans, whether it's a skate with the wings or it's an event at a bar, or, uh, an event center like here at City Lights or whatever, always more fun after a win. Yes. All right, well, this coming weekend, Friday and Saturday, November 17th and 18th at the Austin Bruins, 705 puck drop both nights. Watch at City Lights Barn Event Center, as I mentioned, here on 2nd uh, Second Street here in Aberdeen, just south of the uh, overpass. And, uh, of course, on NHLTV.com as well. Or listen to 941 The Rock, HubCityRadio.com, or The Rock app. Now, The Rock app, you can download to your phone anywhere in the world. You can listen on your phone and listen to the audio. Next home games are Friday and Saturday, December 1st and 2nd, versus Minot, the Minot Minotauros. Corporate night sponsorships and reserve season tickets for Wings home games are available for the 2023-2024 season. Call Aaron 605-380-5852 for more information. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. With that, once again, we thank Comfy, Nick Comfort, for joining us here yep. at Wings Weekly. Good luck against the Bruins yep. this weekend. Thank you, Jay. All right, we'll be back next week with a new edition of Wings Weekly. That's it for this one. Thank you for listening and watching.